Christmas. <laughs> All right, we're going to give it a second to breathe here. Let it go. Um, well, hopefully breathing with a, a mask on, I guess, here for uh, those in Broncos country. We're running. I'm waiting for Buana to give us the emphatic thumbs up to make sure that we are good to go. I hope he's shaking his head no right now. I got a stall. Okay, it's stalling. I'm doing so great at this. He's giving, okay, there's the thumbs up. Carl, I dish it off to you. Yes, well, welcome in everyone to a Saturday night, Saturday night of Mile High Insiders. I am your guest host today. Luke cannot be here for, I'm not sure what's going on, but he's got other prior commitments. So Nick and I, you get us twice this week. How great for all of you. And Nick, you are looking very festive. How are you, buddy? I am feeling very festive. You're right. That's the way to do it. I decided I have this. Uh, the family got it for me last Christmas. It's not the ugliest Bronco sweater I've ever seen, but it's pretty up there. So I think I'm going to wear it every single episode until Christmas comes because <laughs> the NFL season for the Broncos is comical. So I might as well just lean into it. You know, right. it's just one thing after another. Some might say this, this on me is a tragedy. Some might say it's a comedy. I don't know. But to either way, I'm going to keep it going. So I'm going to wear this until Christmas is here. All right. Well, if the Broncos win tomorrow, you for sure have to wear it every single day until they lose next. I mean, honestly, I'm doing data stuff behind the, the C network, so I could, I could probably wear something like this. It wouldn't give us <laughs> too much of a, a silly image and it's festive, you know, it's, yeah, it's whatever. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm killing it. Well, as, as I think most of our listeners know, there's been a lot of Broncos news today that maybe we can get to. I, I don't know, but uh, we'll get to that here in just a second. Before we do, I want to let everyone know that tonight's live stream podcast is brought to you by sportsbetting.com. Broncos country gambling is now legal in the state of Colorado. And here's what makes sportsbetting.com a no brainer for all sports fans. Sharp odds and low juice. They have in-house bookmakers. They're not a third party provider of odds, reduced juice, best prices, and they are a hassle free bonus uh, that they are providing right now. It means that the bonus money is yours after you bet it one time. Other sites, sometimes it takes five to 30 different times of betting. They have 24-7 live customer support, always a real person in the U.S. And here's the kicker. At sportsbetting.com forward slash mile high huddle, you can get 100% risk-free week of sports betting up to $1,000. Not just one bet, but all of your bets. Play for a week, and if your losses exceed your winnings at the end of the week, sportsbetting.com forward slash mile high huddle will cover 100% of the difference up to $1,000 with a one-time rollover. So head on over to sportsbetting at sportsbetting.com forward slash mile high huddle. That's sportsbetting.com forward slash mile high huddle and capitalize on a risk-free week of sports betting up to $1,000. And make sure that you're finding us on Twitter. You can find me at Carl Dumbler MHH and Nick at Nick Kindle MHH. And if you're joining us, uh, YouTube, Facebook, whatever it is, do us a huge favor, like, subscribe, and share uh, because it just really helps us out. Click that little thumbs up. Really, again, just helps us get all everything out of there. And make sure you head on over to milehighhuddle.com for all of our great in-season uh, content. And it's just, it's, it's right now, there's going to be a lot of information coming at you. So make sure you head on over there and know that it is affiliated with Sports Illustrated, part of uh, the Maven Coalition, brought to you by Overtime Media. Well, Nick. Oh, <laughs> oh I'm getting a call. Hello, Mr. Oh, John Elway. Oh, how are you doing? No, no, no. This is Nick Kendall. I'm not going to start a quarterback for you tomorrow. That is apparently wide receiver, practice squad wide receiver and quarterback Kendall Hinton. Played quarterback for a few games at the uh, Wake Forest uh, ACC school. Good coach there. They've kind of done pretty well in the ACC, despite not being the, the best recruiters. And gosh, the Broncos are going into tomorrow's game with a practice squad, practice squad wide receiver taking snaps. I uh, 2020, you just continue you just continue to flip the script. I don't even know. What I'm, it's, uh, it's we're gonna have a lot to talk about, but right, oh it's it's at that point. It's so sad. You about have to laugh just to keep yourself oh. halfway sane. I I I don't know. It, it is. It's a clown show, and oh. and the Broncos are caught right in the middle of it. I just saw Mike Purcell tweeted out something about uh, did we use up all of our COVID days during the Pats uh, days or whatever you know everything was going on with that. And uh, it, it just, it is, it's so weird. All these other teams get postponements. We had a postponement this week yeah. to a game on Tuesday. Now that might not happen on Tuesday. Also and, because there's a full blown outbreak at uh, Baltimore. Right. Yeah. And somehow though, the Broncos, you got to play. 
So th- that's that's where we're at in the NFL. And, and I see this one from Zach Lee Butler, uh, super chat coming in. He says, biased bull stuff, NFL, knowingly cripple a team on the eve of a game. Patty Mahomes gets a stomach ache and they would cancel the the NFL season just no, to I be think sure. He, the MLB I think he meant okay, okay. The MLB season just to be sure he's okay. Hashtag state of being, hashtag Roger sucks. Uh, I, <sighs> they have to, they have to postpone this game, right? Honestly, I know that if the Broncos were in a place where they were competing for the AFC West and a, a real playoff spot, I think I'd be about it. I know they're not totally out yet, but like just for the storyline and the, the chaos of it all, like, can you imagine tomorrow we're going to get this? And I, I don't know what's going to happen. I mean, they're playing a non quarterback at quarterback too. Right. So we might as well just play, you know, <laughs> I guess, they might as yeah. well make them wear leather helmets, you know, yeah. like who cares this forward is, pass. This is going back to, to my high school days of you had like two passes in the game and oh. they were both like screen passes to the running back. So they still, I played wide receiver and I was a glorified offensive lineman. It, it sucks. Like you play for Iowa. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's, got that's what it too. was. Yeah. Left and right. And, and H H H five, five, five. I smell a gargantuan upset tomorrow. Broncos by 17. Fortunately, quarterback <laughs> is one of the least important positions in the game. Right, yeah. Let's go Broncos. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. you know, quarterback uh, lives matter too. It, it, it's, uh, it's uh, I don't know. It, it's frustrating that this is how it's gone. It'll be kind of fun just to see a little bit of what kind of offense they can come up with. If this had happened at the beginning of the week, I would feel a little bit excited just about what they could do. But having it happen the night before the game, how, I mean, you got to change your entire game plan now. And and trying to do that one night and have a guy that hasn't taken snaps at quarterback all of a sudden have to take snaps at quarterback that hasn't worked with the center, hasn't worked on handoffs with Lindsey and um, and Gordon. I mean, just the whole thing is, it's a mess. It's asking for somebody to get hurt, honestly. Like there's yeah. going to be a wide receiver or an offensive lineman or something where somebody's going to get injured so i guess we'll see what happens i know at first people were like oh royce freeman uh then we were like oh maybe it's going to be kendall hilton it does sound like it's going to be kendall uh great name by the way spells it wrong but great name i just got to lean into that one because this is yeah. my chance jason kendall played for years and years that was my dude now we got kendall hinton the quarterback of the denver broncos so <laughs> gonna be insane and hey the broncos might actually have to stick with the run game i know that was going to be confusing coming into this game uh, i know they stuck with a run game last week uh, now they have no choice whether what kind of run game we're looking like, I mean, we might see KJ Hamler get 10 carries. I mean, they might yeah. have to be that diversified Trip in option. their rushing attack. Yeah, for real. So it's going to be weird. And this is probably the most intrigued I've been with the Broncos game since, oh man, maybe the Kansas City game this year, just because who knows what's going to happen. I mean, people yeah. are going to be tuning in this game now just, just for the chaos. Because yeah. this is this is an embodiment of 2020 and not not uh, chaos. Cody coming in again. Cody's yeah. always been a good supporter. Nice of there, show. Cody. Yeah, nice hat. You can't help but laugh just how unlucky we are. I actually am pumped to see what happens tomorrow. We have everything to gain and nothing to lose. I mean, that's the attitude. And I know a bunch of the players are upset. You mentioned Mike Purcell. I know I think Kareem Jackson's been tweeting about it. Uh, Jerry Judy's been tweeting about it, like how much a BS it is. So uh, we're just going to see what happens, I guess. It might be one of the, the shortest games ever. It might be, you know, like both these teams run, 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 punt type of thing going on here. But And that will make the game condensed at least. Yeah. Uh, but man, it is going to be insane. I can't believe this is happening. And I guess we haven't even really br- touched down on exactly what's happened. Guys, <laughs> I can't, we kind of did, but all the Broncos quarterbacks have been ruled inactive for the game tomorrow. Uh, Jeff Driscoll came down with a positive test on Thursday, I believe. And it was found out via contact tracing that all three of the Broncos other quarterbacks were exposed to uh, Driscoll without masks on. So that was a, that means due to the protocol, those players have to test negative five times. I think it is all of them uh, to be eligible again. So that leaves the Broncos right now with zero out of four quarterbacks on the roster that are active, meaning they're going to have to call up Kendall Hinton to uh, play the quarterback position. So uh, my God, (laughs) Carl, I can't believe it, but I I'm again, I'm in a festive mood. How about Tebow? (laughs) It's time. One game. Um, yeah. Well, I mean, really, if we're talking like triple option kind of offense, there might not be many that are better suited for that kind of offense. I mean, he can pick up a few off, a uh, few first downs just by powering through people. He, he's a fullback playing quarterback. 
Honestly, and, I just want to skip Bayless the the beat that they had that they somebody <laughs> made that if DJ Beats or whatever his name was unleashed him Tebow. That's that would be great. I mean, I'm not a Tebowite by any means. That was very chaotic and crazy, and I'm glad we moved past that. But one game, come on, Carl, one game. <laughs> I know. I, yeah, <laughs> it would it would it would be fun. I'm trying to think of any other quarterbacks out there that would be fun. I mean, John uh, Jay Cutler. Jay Cutler. Let's yeah. just run through the gambit. Let's have. Uh, Jay Cutler out there. Elway's still on the team. Yeah, Manning, Jay Plummer's still in Colorado. Let's do it. Like, yeah. why not? <laughs> yeah. What, what could have hurt oh, at this point? I mean, it, it's God. everybody's going to be picking the Broncos to lose, so you might as well just kind of steer into the to the chaos and and just see what happens. <laughs> I I just I'm at a I, we're, I'm not at a loss for words. We're still going to be talking here for the, the remainder of this episode. Yeah. This is incredible. Let's get to the, some of these supers. They're really rolling in now. Mr. Castillo. Yeah. So is Hinton going to be more prepared to run the Saints offense or the Broncos offense? Happy for both Bulls and the team on the four-year deal. Yeah, hats off the Bulls. We're going to get to that too. A four-year deal, $68 million. I've not seen the complete breakdown yet, but uh, that makes him the fourth highest paid left tackle and the fifth highest paid right or fifth highest paid overall tackle. If my yeah. That's just top off the top of the You're noggin. Right. Um, but that's a good deal. I think he might've gotten more on the open market, but we'll see either way tackle. At least one of the tackle positions is solidified. And now the Broncos have a chip to play with coming into the off season with uh, Justin Simmons and the ability to use the franchise tag or not. So that's, right. that's all good news. Obviously though, the story right now is <laughs> the quarterback position in 2020. So we got this uh, in Kendall Hinton. We trust let's go coming in. How you doing Isaiah? Uh, let's get, let's scroll through some of these supers here, Buana, cause we got a bunch. Let's Carl, I'll give you the next one. Okay. Mr. Boggins saying, Flory out here saying, the Broncos have no one to blame but themselves. I don't usually throw things, but when I do, it's at Florio's head. So, okay, so we have heard a few things that yeah. I'm not really going to air here, but it does sound like some players are being pretty stupid. I mean, we might as well air it. There's some whispers that uh, the Broncos, those quarterbacks might have been non-cooperative in contact tracing as well. So we might be talking about suspensions coming down the line. Who knows what it means for draft picks, uh, but the Broncos are going to be, this is a, I'm looking at it as a punishment. I mean, how they danced around for the Titans and especially the Patriots with all their tests or the, or the Ravens right now. Uh, right. I think they're giving the Broncos the finger. There's, I mean, yeah. maybe two fingers. Well, and, yeah, I mean, uh, it, we'll see what happens, but the, the, there was talk of Cam Newton eating dinner with, uh, Oh, their cornerback that had it. Uh, Stephon, Stephon Gilmore. Yeah. That after they found out he was positive, the two of them went out to dinner together. And, and so I, I get that there, there is some talk that, yeah, the Broncos messed up. Some of their players really, really screwed up and then kind of tried to cover up some of their mistakes. Uh, that, that's some of the immaturity of having a young team, unfortunately. And I think and some we'll guys, see more might come from that. Right. Uh, yeah. But, but still, you're, you're right. The other teams have done stupid things. I mean, th there was talk of the Titans having secret practices, all those, uh, all that. Um, and yet they still were able to have their games postponed. I still think in the end, I, I think the game will get postponed, but I, and part of me does help that it happens just because I think the Broncos are ticked off and it could just pull off enough craziness. I mean, you might as well run like every trick play you have in the, in the playbook in this kind of game. <laughs> Just Why not? If something works. Yeah. <laughs> Why not? I mean, also the Saints. I mean, it's really bad because the Saints are like a historically great rush stopping defense. Mm -hmm. So like now the Broncos, uh, I mean, we've been talking about, they need to play more tight end sets, right? Like that Pat Shermer was heavy with that 11 personnel. Now, like he he heck, let's go with 13. Let's get, let's get pack the box. Maybe do some reverses, get one wide receiver out there. Let it be. I guess I would go with uh, KJ Hammer. He's the most explosive one they have, but my, my gosh, just, just chaos. So uh, Buana, let's get some of these supers up. Cause I know that we are, we're running pretty quickly here. Yeah. So we got Smith Corona come in and go I ahead. I like this one. Yeah. If sports comedies taught me anything, the Broncos will beat the prison guards tomorrow. <laughs> when our water boy sacks shooter McGavin to win our first pennant in 60 years. That's uh man. Th that is like my childhood, my, my teenage years right there, all in one, one message. I love that Smith. Thank you very much for that. Uh, that, that takes me down some some great times, and you are right. I go the, to your happy place, Carl. Yeah, just, and then Mr. Boggins coming in saying, uh, "Goose Raba, Goose, ah, uh, how are you guys?" <laughs> uh, man, Mr. Boggins, I was out by your way the other day in uh, North Bend. I climbed Mailbox Peak out in Seattle. So, uh, 
we'll see. Honestly, I might do another hike tomorrow just because of the chaos of this and trying to take advantage of the weather. Oh, we got Kyle Heckman coming in now. Honestly, it won't be much different than the last couple of seasons, not having a quarter quarterback. Kyle, you know, you say that. You say that, but like you, you don't know how bad like the Jeff Driscoll Tampa Bay game kind of thing. Like that's the level of ineptitude we're talking. Or any of the Pax and Lynch starts, you know, like that's yikes, Brandon Allen versus the Bills. Like this is kind right. of the the stuff where it's been bad for the Broncos. Not, I, I know you're tongue in cheek here, but like it can be worse, right? It can be I, worse. And we might see it tomorrow. To or me, it'll be great. I, don't know. I mean, how do you even design a playbook for this? For, for a guy that the night before the game, you're telling, Hey, you're starting tomorrow. <laughs> it, it's going to get someone hurt. It's yeah. going to get somebody hurt. Like that's, that's the long and short of it. And I know, let's say the Broncos have to play Tuesday, but the fact that there's been no practices, no center exchanges. No, I mean, Kendall Hilton's been a wide receiver. You know, it's like, what are they going to do? Yeah. It, <laughs> oh my God. I, yeah. I, mean, what, I wonder what the saints are thinking right now too. <laughs> <laughs> we got a, a preseason victory. Oh. I, I mean, it, it's, I, I don't know, but uh, Kyle Heckman coming in here. Actually, I think <laughs> Goodall might be trying to force Schirmer to give Lindsay the dang ball. <laughs> uh, I mean, maybe, but Gosh. Okay, Carl, I guess now we should go down. Are we caught up on Supers? Buana, I'm counting on you here for that. What is the path to a Broncos victory? I feel like we have to talk about that where this is so unlikely now that the Broncos win tomorrow. Never say never. The NFL is crazy, and this is about as crazy as it gets. But what is a path to victory with Kendall Hinton at quarterback against arguably the best defense in the NFL? Arguably. Number one against a run, top ten again in the yeah. pass. Very good offensive line. I mean, this is the top five team in the NFL right now. Right. How do the Broncos come out with a win in this one, given this chaos? So, I mean, it's going to have to be, I mean, the defense is going to have to play their best game of the year by far. They're going to have to make Taysom Hill turn the ball over probably two, three times. Uh, they're they're going to have to, like I said, I, I think trick plays. You're going to have to do a little bit of smoke and mirrors here. Because a regular offense of having him, you know, do the center exchange, hand it off to a running back, go off tackle, go inside zone, whatever you want to call it, uh, that that's not going to work. That that's that, that's going to be a failure. They're going to load up the box and say, "Make this quarterback have to throw that's not thrown since college." And you can run the dang ball, but it, it's going to be into a brick wall. And so, like I said, you're going to have to do some trick plays to make them have to really respect that something weird could happen that you're going to have to leave them a little bit confused on some things. And, and then, I mean, Kendall's going to have to complete at least what eight passes in this game, I would say. Uh, Probably, but I think he needs at least five that go beyond eight yards of the line of scrimmage. Okay. And then special teams is going to have to play lights out. You can't have a mistake on special teams, which has not been, the forte for the Broncos this year. Uh, They had their best game, I'd say, last week. So maybe they can build off of that, but you're going to have to win the field position battle. You're going to have to, again, force a couple turnovers and then not... uh, You can make mistakes, but don't have them be where they're turnovers on on offense. That's going to be a big thing because right now, just this chaos, that's when turnovers happen. That's when injuries happen. Just guys getting confused of what's going on. This should be a primetime game. (laughs) Really? I mean, this has never happened in the NFL. No, this is (laughs) this. Hopefully it doesn't happen again. Right. But uh, this is, uh, this is incredible. We got Zach Lee Butler. Roger still sucks. So thank you for your contribution, (laughs) Zach. Uh, Really actually do appreciate it. Um, Yeah. yeah, It's just, it's chaos. Honestly, the biggest thing for the Broncos here is they need to get a lead early. And whether that be some crazy, you know, turnover for a touchdown or whatever, if they can get a lead early and just take the air out of the ball, there's a chance. Yeah. And that's pretty much all you can hope for in this situation. But God, there's, there's not much more coordinated than the pass game in professional sports. And to have the guy who hasn't even taken a single, as far as I know, a single snap at the quarterback position since he's been a Bronco. I mean, that's right. Been at, but like, why would he, why would he take any snaps? He's trying to make it as a wide receiver in the league. Right. So, uh, and then he didn't have any practices this week. Yeah. <laughs> the night before the game. I mean, the Broncos players have to be ticked off. I'm guessing that also this could be a game where you see some ugliness from yeah. the, maybe from the Broncos. I mean, they've kind of been teetering that like, 
that line where there's been some plays after action extracurriculars, if you will. And they're going to be irritated. I know it's probably not fair to take out of the Saints, although Bounty Gate, I mean, if there's any <laughs> talk about poetic coming around, but it's going to be interesting. We got Amari coming in, hinting 18 for 23, 214 yards, one touchdown, one rushing touchdown, zero interceptions. If- if that off happens, the Xbox. <laughs> if that happens, Broncos win this game because the, the, yeah. the odds of that are off the charts. <laughs> but hey, like I said, you, you never know. I mean, crazier things have happened in in this world and history, but not many. All right, Pranked Films uh, coming in here with the super chat. Really appreciate it. The path to victory is get enough yards for Legatron, aka Brandon McManus, to boot sixty yard field goals all day. Arguably the best kicker in the NFL this season, right. Brandon McManus, and one of the best in the league. So yeah, and, and, and everybody who's Elway has paid recently has t- continued on good path. So yeah, God bless, fingers crossed for Garrett Bowles <laughs> keeping up this level of play. <laughs> yeah, no, that, that's right. And I mean, you're you're gonna have to take a few more chances. You got a chance for a sixty yard field goal, you take it. You're gonna have to take points when you can get them, even if it is taking a risk of switching field position. You got, like I said, you just got to take some risks in this one and see how it goes. Isaiah coming in with another super chat. How does the NFL not see this as a joke? I think they probably do, but I think they don't care about the Broncos season. I think they do care about the Saints season. So, you know, getting them going, I mean, this might be a Drew Brees swan song season. And also I think that they are going above and beyond to punish the Denver Broncos for those players not being masked. And again, rumored that they were, non-cooperative in contact tracing interviews, which again, that's, you know, just wear the mask and we're not in this situation, but here we are, you know, so it is what it is. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Can we, uh, man, I don't know. We got some more coming in here. Okay. We got to get, uh, them. yeah. Najal tough coming in saying brothers, brutal news. Still Fangio will have plan for a hill. Defense will play hard. Like all of us, New Orleans won't know what to expect. Chance of a lifetime for Hinton. Maybe he will seize the moment, I believe. So I, here, here's what I'll say. If Fangio and the Broncos find a way to win this game, Fangio should win coach of the year. <laughs> they should carry him off. Yeah. They should like do the full on, like, you know, the Gatorade over him. Maybe, yes. maybe instead you use like a Germex or something though. Yeah. Like, yeah, just, we want to be safe and sanitary and then just carry him off the field at six yeah. feet. Maybe do, carry him from the the bleacher or something, but right. my God, I, if this is a, what I, I know that again, sports betting.com. I'm wondering what Vegas is doing. They had to take the game off the line, right? Like they just like, nope, no bets. <laughs> We're not taking any money on this, especially the under. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this should be a low scoring game. Saints are going to realize if they get a lead, all they have to do is try to protect it. Yeah. And Broncos, like I said, th- they're not going to be able to throw it all over the field. They're going to try to run and keep this a low scoring game. So if there are still bets out there, go get that. But uh, yeah, no. Mohammed coming in here. Appreciate the super chat. This should should have been a winnable game. Now I don't know. I want Zach to be the quarterback. <laughs> oh, man. Well, good luck, Zach. Although maybe the offensive line helps him out a bit. But man, I th- of course, after this, Denver beats a very good up-and-coming Miami team. Yep. And things are looking interesting. Obviously, it would have been a tall ask for them to beat the Saints. But, you know, it was an interesting game. And now just, God, throw excrement at the wall. Who the heck knows what's going to happen? But, I mean, I guess we, this pretty much probably does it for the Broncos playoffs, Hope, right? Like, I guess they still have to play the game. But, like, yeah, the odds of I, that happening? Ugh. I, I've been saying to get to the playoffs because the AFC is deep this year. That's part of yes. the problem is you got a lot of really good teams. Nine and seven. I think nine and seven is is the absolute lowest you can go and make the playoffs. Well, Broncos yeah. being four and six, that means they've got one game. They have to go five and one to close out the season. Yeah. And and to me, this was a more winnable game than a couple of their others later in the season. Like the Saints have been great, but with Taysom Hill, I thought maybe they could surprise a few people, make him throw some really stupid passes. Because I mean, that was something we were going to talk about tonight. Is before all this news came out is Taysom Hill and some of his issues. I mean, you saw one pass last week that ended in a completion, but he just threw up a Hail Mary pass. Yeah. And and nobody except for Emmanuel Sanders happened to know where the football was, was at. Uh, and, and Taysom Hill had a few others like that in the game. And so it was, it, this was a chance for getting things possibly back on track, maybe getting to a chance to make the playoffs. It, it's just really, really hard to see a path to victory. 
it's just going to have to be a complete fluke that something happens. The ball bounces the Broncos way all day. Penalties somehow play a part in it. I, I don't know. I, I just really don't know what that path looks like. It Broncos getting a lead early, some points off a of special team slash defense and being able to take the air out of the ball, you know, kind of like, uh, what was it? We're, just, we're doing the movie cliches, the water boy where the, what is it? Southeast Louisiana state, uh, the big program, the famous one, just starts kneeling the ball and punting it yeah. because they don't want to give the defense a chance. Like that's kind of what the Broncos need to have kind of happen, right? So uh, right. I know we have coming in. So who is going to be the backup quarterback to Hinton? I'm guessing it would be Royce Freeman. Uh, he's been listed as an emergency quarterback. That's where my my head goes. But uh, who only knows? So yeah, um, we do have uh, our boss waiting in the wings here. If he's ready to hop in, I see him. Oh, nope. He's all of a sudden frantically. Oh, he's giving the heads up. He's okay, okay. There he is. What's up, dudes? <laughs> oh, What's man. Up, bro? We're just uh, leaning into this kid. <laughs> <laughs> the we latest. We haven't talked Garrett Bowles yet. Okay. I just... The latest I've heard is the game is still on. Like, in what world can you keep this game scheduled in which the Denver Broncos bend over backwards so that the NFL could accommodate Bill Belichick? We've seen them recently accommodate uh, the B- Lamar Jackson and the Ravens, the Bills, the the Titans earlier in the season. Like, seriously, if the NFL makes the Broncos play this game without rescheduling, if I'm John Elway, dude, like I am blowing up the league front office telephones and calling in any and every favor that I have because it's it's just not fair, guys. I mean, Mike Florio just put out a, an article or actually a tweet saying that the Broncos have nobody to blame but themselves for the situation they're in at quarterback. And maybe that's true to a point, but still, they've, they've been, um, I think, unfairly pitted in this situation to expect them to play with a guy who hasn't tossed a, a game, a, a football in a meaningful game since 2018. This isn't the NFL, dude. Yeah. Well, and, and you think about it, the Titans, you, you're talking about they have no one to blame but themselves. Well, the Titans kept having practices after they had lots of different cases. Like I said, they, they were possibly having private practices held at a high school or something like that, that there's pictures out there. They've denied it, but there are pictures out there. So it, yet the NFL accommodated them and said, hey, we're going to postpone your games. We're going to move everybody else's schedules around. Same with the Patriots. They had a couple guys get it. And of course, Cam Newton is out. So, hey, let's postpone that and move everybody's schedule around. Let's get rid of the Broncos bye week in in that situation. And now all of a sudden, the Broncos are the ones needing this. And nope, go ahead, guys. You're going to play with the practice squad guy that hasn't played quarterback in years. Good luck. Yeah. I mean, he might as well forfeit. I mean, if if they do force them to play Fangio and the Broncos, Elway, they're not going to forfeit as a matter of pride because, you know, it's right. the Denver Broncos, but you might as well chalk it up as a loss. What are you going to do? I, when I DM'd you guys earlier today, right before you were going uh, going live, I'm like, all right, well, you know, what does a Kendall Hinton offense look like? And I think it was you, Carl. You're like, what? I don't know, triple option. <laughs> that ain't going to work against any NFL defense, but no. especially the Saints, dude. It's ridiculous. Yeah. I mean, it would have been a long shot for the Broncos anyway in this game, but now it's, gosh. <laughs> this would they'd make a Hollywood movie out of this. And Kendall Hint, if Kendall Hinton pulls this off, he's got a book deal. He's going to be on the morning show. He, he, he's going to he doesn't have to ma- play the another game. He's got it made. He's got some cash in the bank for that one. But it's going to be insane. I do want to flip this real quick and ask you guys both a question. So the Broncos, let's say the NFL does force them to play this game. Would you rather go into this game with where the season is at right now and for be forced to play Kendall Hinton in this one game, or be forced to give up, let's say, a fourth round pick? What's the preferable outcome? Let's say the Broncos, mm. for some reason, will push the game back, but you're going to have to forfeit a pick. Would you rather be forced to be, watch this Kendall Hinton game and see what happens from there or give up draft capital? What's what's the bigger thing? Because I think the Titans uh, lost a fifth-round pick, uh, and it does seem like the Broncos are giving, again, I said it already, two middle fingers to the Broncos. It's because they didn't mask up, they didn't follow the protocols, and et cetera, uh, rather than bending over backwards for a team with more star studded players like Baltimore does right now, but w- what would be preferable? Cause right now, I mean, this is bad obviously in the moment, but so far they are still holding on to their picks. If I'm honestly, if I'm John Elway, I'm not accepting the premise. I'm rejecting the premise because we bent over backwards to accommodate you NFL earlier this season, scratch our back. But for the sake of the hypothetical, you're asking the question. I, if there, if it comes down to surrendering an, even a fourth or a fifth round pick, I'm playing the game because the odds aren't in Denver's favor of, of making this a playoff push season anyway. What do you think, Carl? 
Yeah, I'm with you there. It's uh, like I told Nick earlier, the Broncos probably have to go five and one down the stretch to make the playoffs. You got to get to nine and seven. And that means they've got games against the Chiefs, the Raiders, the Bills. I'm trying to think who else they have out there. I know they have the Panthers, uh, the Chargers one more time. I, that's a tall task to ask. And the Saints as well on top of that. And e- even even with Drew Brees out, they haven't really been winning this year because of Drew Brees. They've been winning because of that incredible defense. They, they've they given up, I think it was three points to one team, eight points to another, 13 to another in the last three games. So this was already going to be a pretty low scoring game for the Broncos. Most likely they're going to have to win a, a little bit of a lower, lower shootout or not, not a shootout, but uh, it was going to have to be a defensive battle. And so, yeah, I, I'm with you. I'd, I'd probably keep the fourth round pick and just take the L. What about uh, you, Nick? I would definitely rather take the pick in a season like this. I mean, if you're talking playoff push, then I'd maybe go the other way, but just where they're going right now, this is also a game that they probably weren't going to win anyways, but still, it's pretty crazy. And also, this is something I saw somebody kind of pull out a point earlier. Do you think that the Broncos' lack of clear ownership right now is hurting them in this ability to negotiate what happens in the next 24 hours to a week? I mean, because the yeah. – Who's fronting the Broncos? They don't really have an ownership presence right now. It's a team. I guess Joe Ellis can call, but that's different than saying the owner of the team is, you know, raising a stink. Like, would this be happening to Jerry Jones right now, even though the Cowboys season's over? Hell no. no. Yeah, it's, I'm with you. It, it's it's bad. I mean, there was that article just released not too long ago about the new rules of needing ownership in place. And if you don't have it, you're going to start getting fined by the NFL. And so the Broncos are one of the teams, obviously, that they're targeting with some of that the Titans as well. And and so it, it's, it does hurt a lot. Uh, if Pat Bowen was still here, they would not do this to Pat Bowen. Guys, I don't want, I didn't want to come over or come on and take over your show, but I also wanted to get your thoughts. I, I know, I don't know if you've talked about it yet, but the, the Garrett Bowles extension, have you guys even scratched the surface on that yet? A, a little, not a whole lot. I mean, it, it's, it's been a lot of obviously people pretty upset with what's going on with the game. And, and we're pretty upset obviously with it too, but uh, no, well, yeah. That, about 10 minutes talking about my ugly Christmas. Sweater. <laughs> yeah, that is, really that is an impressive sweater, dude. I mean, I right. am a little peanut butter and jelly right now, but uh, no, the Garrett Bowles extension, that, that is huge news that, that really should be the story, but unfortunately with everything else, it's gotten taken over, but that, that is big for the Broncos. It's big for Bulls. I think it's a deal that benefits both very, very well. I, I, I mean, four years, 68 million, 17 million a year. It, it's not top of the position contract. He was not going to quite get that, of course. I thought he was going to get a little bit more when you're looking at guys like David Bektar, Bakhtiari of getting 23 million a year, Lar- Laramie Tunsil getting 22 million. It, it's kind of interesting to see the, the tackle position that you've got these guys who are getting over 20 million and then. Then there's this next big bunch of guys right there in that 16, 17 million range. And, and so, I mean, he's just kind of right there in the middle of all that. And uh, so, like I said, it's a good contract for him. It's going to be a huge bargain, even by next year, I would say. Yeah, and those two big tackles getting paid there at the end are probably the ones that make me the most surprised just because Garrett Bowles was the next guy to get paid. Uh, Larry Tunsil and Ronnie Stanley, both from that same draft class, that one right before uh, bowls. So it is a little bit surprising. I do wonder how much the, the salary cap potentially constricting next year has anything to do with that deal, but stars had still been getting paid. I mean, it didn't ch- keep the chiefs from paying Mahomes and all these other guys getting huge contracts. So it's a good deal. Also uh, talking with some people, it does sound like Garrett bowls maybe could have gotten a little more in the open market. Uh, obviously his agents talked to talk to teams and kind of felt what the market would be, but you never know until they're actually bidding on each other in the open market. Uh, but it does sound like Garrett bowls wanted to stay. And hats off to him. It kind of sounded like a Derek Wolf situ- situation where it's like, is this the deal on the table? Let's take it. Yeah, so yeah. that's admirable. Really happy for that. And I know that the right tackle position has been bad for a long time, but God, it's, it's such a relief, even though the season's gone off the rails and even more so today. Uh, but to have that left t- tackle position solidified for the next four years with somebody that I really trusted that position, that's that's a huge one. That that's yeah. that should be the storyline today, but obviously the chaos of 2020 uh, reigns supreme. <laughs> you know, you 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 talk about this a lot, Nick. The fact that there's certain positions in the NFL 
that, you know, it's a got man league and you're always searching for those corners, <clears throat> excuse me, those cornerstone positions for the Denver Broncos. You know, you look at quarterback, you look at left tackle, you look at edge, you look at corner and Garrett Bowles turn the corner. You're always yeah. at this stage, everyone's going to be a little uncomfortable in terms of let's just hope it's not a contract year uh, mirage, right? That's a, it's not fool's gold that this is here to stay. I think there's more evidence to suggest that it's here to stay this, this yeah. version of Garrett Bowles than, than not because he's now patched this level of play into two different seasons, right? From week nine on last year, all the way up until this point, you know, that's two years in a row that he's managed to, you know, at least part of the year anyway, right? He, he had a struggle to open uh, 2019, but that encourages me that he was able to parlay and yeah. continue that momentum into 2020. So I'm happy for the kid. And especially when you know his backstory and what he came from and how he ended up playing football and then how he ended up playing for Utah going in the first round. I mean, the money that he earned on a, a, as a first round pick for most people out there, that's, that's life changing money, but this kind of yeah. money for bowls, this is the type of money that changes his life, changes his kids' lives, his uh, grandchildren for it's, it's a multi-generation life changing type of contract. And in this case, I think it really is a good thing for the Denver Broncos and their little, uh, I don't know if you want to call it Bill Parce uh, Bill Parcells kind of, head coach psychology, it worked, right? Not giving yep. him the fifth round option, you know, it sent the message. It really informed and inspired his, how he attacked the off season, even with <clears throat> the, the, the bug that shall go unmentioned, all that going on, man, he attacked it, made sure that he not only carried on the momentum from the end of last season, but I think guys has built on it. I mean, to be the number one graded left tackle, and I know it's PFF and sometimes we question the grades and they can be arbitrary and we scratch our heads sometimes, but to be the number one left tackle this deep into the season, you know, that's, I'm just happy for this kid. What can I say? Right. His interview, I think it was last week or earlier this week. I can't remember which one it was. That was one of the best interviews I've listened to in a long time. He was well-spoken. He was intelligent. He really voiced how he got to the point that he is now of the work that he put in and not letting everything happening this off season be an excuse of, of why he was, he would struggle this year and, and talking about how he's sitting there in his kitchen in the bare, you know, barefoot. So he can feel where the weight is, how it's shifting, uh, having his wife learn pass rush moves right, so that he could practice on where he should put his hands, all those kind of things. I love that. I mean, that, that is just, like I said, it was one of the best interviews I've listened to in a long time. And, and just to see this kid go from everybody saying, get this guy out of here to now one of the, I, honestly, he's one of my favorites on the Broncos. I think he's just really just, he's the story that you love because like I said, he's had a really bad background and he's really risen above all of those obstacles to the point now of working hard to, uh, to really achieve his dreams and, and his dreams end up helping the Broncos. I mean, it's just a, a bonus for us. So uh, it, it was, it was nice to see him get that deal done. And I'm nice. It's so much better also than heading into this off season of now they have options with Justin Simmons. Yes. That's a great point, Carl. Uh, do they tag Justin Simmons again? You know, that's, that remains to be seen. He's been playing excellent football as of late, but you know, is John Elway going to prioritize that safety position enough to give Justin Simmons a market shifting, likely market shifting deal? You know, that that remains to be a scene. So we'll see. But you're absolutely right. Hats off to Garrett Bowles. He's put in the work. Uh, I, I was definitely a proponent of him last year as well. I thought that he turned the corner outside of that game against Cleveland where Miles Garrett took his lunch money a few times. But if anybody's paying attention to anything, Miles Garrett, Miles Garrett is the, one of the biggest bullies in the schoolyard right now, taking everybody's lunch money. Yep. But Aaron Donald's the only one who's better right now, if you ask me as far as pass, rusher, pass rushers go. Uh, but Garrett Bowles played great last year. Oh, it's a mirage. It's Drew Locke in there. Oh, he's playing great this year. Oh, it's a mirage. They're not calling holds. The tape is good. The tape is good. He's not lunging. He's not holding. You know, it's he's not overcorrecting. He's not turning yep. his shoulders immediately. So it looks good, and that's something. You know, Mike Munchak gets credit for this. Now, the offensive line hasn't been as good as we all hope this year, but Mike Munchak should get credit for this. Dalton Reiser should get some credit for this. Uh, it's Garrett Bowles, all the credit in the world. So really happy for him. I'm sad that we are talking so much about this quarterback chaos right now uh, because I would really love to be talking – Garrett Bowles, Ryan Ramchak, a, a little bit more of that, uh, yeah. because obviously that was a huge debate after the draft. Ryan Ramchak came out immediately, was pro bowl, all pro right tackle. And now Garrett Bowles looks like the better of the two. So, you know, hats off. Garrett Bowles, maybe the best tackle in that class. And probably, 
he's trending to be one of John Elway's best first round picks, probably his best first round pick since Von Bond. Miller. Yeah. I mean, yeah. really, like, really. And that has any pick outside of Pax Lynch been more pooped on for the first round by John Elway, you know? So here we are. It's 2020. Things are off the rails, but at least for this one, it's a positive for the Broncos. <laughs> well, hey guys, I'm going to, I know you've got a lot of super chats stacked up and whatnot. Thanks for letting me kind of shoulder my way in and exercise some of my own demons and I'll let you guys get back to it and I'll see everybody tomorrow. Look, if that, if the game ends up happening, <clears throat> we'll do the huddle up pod live stream during the uh, halftime. And then of course the gut reaction. So I'll see you tomorrow for sure. If there is no game, it'll be 6 PM the usual time on, on Sunday. So guys love both of you rock on. Thanks for letting me come on and uh, work out some of these hormones. I'm pissed off at the NFL. I hope they act. I'm not, uh, uh, I'm not going to count on it, though. So thanks, boys. Yeah, always a pleasure, Bros. Thanks, Chad. All right, see you. So, Carl, I know that he kind of asked us to work out some of our hormones, but I'm asking you for all our viewers, just keep your clothes on. I know that you are <laughs> a good-looking man, but uh, I, let's you. let's keep those hormones in check just a little bit. Uh, okay, for a little longer, just a little bit longer. All right, Hunter <laughs> Wurton and coming in here with a question for you, Nick, uh, with a non-bug question. Drew Locke or Zach Wilson next year, if they can get him, obviously. Well, that's a, if you're talking both straight up and we're having like a redraft, I'm take, probably taking Zach Wilson because the unknown is there. That looks like higher potential. And also the injury stuff is for Drew Locke is something we're going to have to talk about. But right now the Broncos are picking what 15th overall. And I think to get Zach Wilson, you probably have to move up to four or five. That's a serious, that's a serious climb. So I, I think right now, if you're talking about moving up from 15 to four and taking uh, Zach Wilson, I'm probably leaning Drew Locke right now. And it's that, also because the Broncos, like they're not in a position where they can afford to give away all these draft picks. They don't have a bunch of picks. They, they yeah. need cheap young players. This is a team that's financially in trouble. <laughs> like right. they don't have cash. So I just, I don't see it happening. Right. Well, I mean, all I right. guess you have some cash because they just paid bulls, but overall, it's <laughs> those cheap overall compared to the rest of the league. They are not in the best financial situation. And we got Naj coming in again. Naj Altaf, good to see you. Double dip in today. Remember the Broncos beat the Chiefs with two, maybe three completions with Tebow? It can happen. It will happen. Well, Naj, I appreciate you uh, ab- apparating this victory tomorrow. But uh, And I was thinking about that, too. I think it was two completions on two for six, eight. Two for eight. Two for eight or two for six. So, again, we got some more Tim Tebow time coming on. Also, already <laughs> rocking the, the backpacking picture there. Looks like he's in the Pacific Northwest, maybe. Uh, hello. But, yeah, it's going to be... Gosh, I know I'm supposed to go to a hike with my wife tomorrow. I think we are going to do it, but this is going to be probably some of the most crazy, entertaining, just the Broncos have nothing to lose, right? Like, mm-hmm. uh, here we go, John coming in. Uh, bad word, but uh, what, what are we going to do now? Keep up the good work. We appreciate that, Josh, and uh, we appreciate you not spelling it out, but uh, we're going to not say it on the airwave so we don't get in trouble. Although now that Chad's already come and checked on us and left, maybe we can just go off the <laughs> He told us to let our hormones loose, so... Yeah. Um, Gosh, this I just this happened like an hour before the show. I found out I was, and I'm like, I don't even know what to, to say. Like, yeah. <laughs> this is gonna be. It's. Is, I, I can, just, they, can they bring back Blake Bortles? No, he he's one of them that. He's one of the uh, ones that was. I think they said all three quarterbacks and Blake Bortles is also. I I don't. Okay, I, I'm i I thought they released Blake Bortles. I don't even remember. So, <laughs> it's uh it's pretty incredible. I got here we go. This guy gets it. Oh, where to go? Jimmy Anderson, we need Kyle Orton. That <laughs> is the win. If you can see here, you can't see Buana around here. He just raised both his hands in the air in the background. <laughs> Kyle Orton's neck beard has been my fantasy football team for about 12 years now. And if he came back and could play one game, also a guy from Iowa, went to Purdue. But, I mean, I'm about it. Kyle Orton, that would be the story. The, screw Tebow. To Elway, no, we want Kyle Orton tomorrow. That would be incredible. <laughs> Oh my goodness. I, I can't even imagine. I, I mean, really at this point, it is kind of just throw somebody back there, give them a, a play sheet with like 10 plays and say, Hey, everybody learn these 10 plays. This is what we're doing. Let's go see what happens. I mean, this is high school football all over again with how they're going to have to run this. Honestly. Okay. So we're talking, this is pure kind of Madden off the rails talk here. No quarterback experience. You're just putting an athlete back there at the quarterback position. Somebody that kind of has the frame, can do a little bit of everything. Who are you putting back there? From the Broncos, I guess Melvin Gordon. Melvin, okay. I mean, I just, I mean, picture, I mean, body-wise, that, that's what I'm thinking. 
he's he's bigger, so he can handle the the brute the the brunt force that's going to be coming at him. Uh, he's I don't know. He's fast enough that he can get to the edge if you need him to do that. He can break some tackles. He can make something crazy happen. I I don't know. I that that's the guy that kind of comes to my mind. What about you? Uh, for me, it'd be Noah Fant. He's just he was a really good basketball player. He's six okay. five, two fifty. You can run a lot of quarterback power with him. Also, something I'm not sure you're going to see with the smaller quarterbacks, but he's also still an athlete where you can stress the edges a little bit with the run game. And a lot of times, a lot of the good quarter or a lot of good tight ends in this league were quarterbacks early in college or high school. So I think that's the position where a lot of times you see that crossover. I mean, Owen Daniels was like a phenomenal high school quarterback and uh, yeah. then went on to Wisconsin and became a really good tight end. But I think that's the guy I'd be leaning to. But we'll see what happens. I mean, it's going to be the worst thing. It, it's, it'll be really fun to watch. Right. Well, yeah, I mean, it, it's at this point, you got to expect that there's going to be a loss. And if something crazy happens, then we can just celebrate like crazy. Uh, I mean, you can scream it from the mountaintops literally tomorrow. And uh, the rest of us can figuratively do that. I mean, I, I don't even know. Like I said, it'll just be fun to watch just to see what in the world they can come up with. I hope it's close. You know, like just uh, like let the Saints, let the Broncos defense just have an, an incredible game. Stymie T- Tyson Hill and just make it be meaningful football late in the game. Yeah. You know, if it's like 20, 20 to zero halfway through the second quarter, then, you know, yawn. But if it's a close game, giddy up. <laughs> I am in. So yep. we'll see what happens. And also, so we have a question here. Um, first, WE come in, and we're probably losing the next two. End up with Zach Wilson range. I mean, we'll talk about the Broncos draft Wayne range when we get there. Right now, they're picking 15. They still have games against the Saints, the Chiefs, and the Bills. So there could be a lot of movement in that time where they could end up in the top eight. That changes the math. Uh, we'll have plenty of time to speculate. Yeah, so, I, I saw you, you tweeted out earlier something about how it really stinks that the Broncos have such a tough schedule. Every be- year. Yeah, because <laughs> that, that factors going. into draft position. Yep. So the Broncos could have the same record as about three or four other teams and finish dead last in that group because of their strength of schedule. Yep. And that, that's unfortunate that that is how that goes. Uh, I just, unfortunately, they're going to be there just because the Chiefs are going to have a good record almost every yeah. single season. Uh, the Chargers look like they've gotten something figured out with their quarterback situation. So, Probably good chance most seasons after this one they're going to be in that seven and nine or better range. Yeah. Raiders have looked pretty darn good this year. So unfortunately, with that those six games factoring into it, Broncos are always going to have a very big strength of schedule. It's unfortunate, but it is what it is. And I guess let's talk about the Broncos defense going on. The Broncos aren't the only one being impacted by the state of the world right now. Uh, but also the saints left side of the offensive line is going to be impacted as well. And I think that could be, that could be a reason that this game is closer than a lot of people think. Obviously Alvin Kamara, arguably the best running back in football. It's not because he's the best runner. He's just the best in the open field. I think he's like far and away the most yards after catch this year too. I think he has like a hundred more yards than everybody else. Also let Pabby play quarterback. If she's in, yes, I'm in, she is from Iowa. So she's got that going for her, <laughs> but, uh, or she's in Iowa, but, um, it is it is very notable that both uh, Teron Armstead and Andreas Beat, left tackle and left guard for the New Orleans Saints, is going to be out. Bradley Chubb could have himself a heck of a game. Granted, I, I think that the Saints, because of that and how conservative they can probably play on offense now, you're not going to have many chances probably for right. to rack up sack numbers. I mean, why they could probably run the Tebow offense this week, the Chiefs won and would beat the Broncos because of what's happening with the Broncos. And it's not disrespect to Hinton. Maybe it's a a little bit to Hilton, but uh, it's more so the fact that this is, this bombshell is dropping Saturday and they have the game plan, the, the reps, like none of it's there to prepare for what, what would have already been a chaotic situation. So uh, must watch TV, but it's kind of like, it could be a car crash. (laughs) Yeah. I I love Uh, this comment from Glenn Hauser. Uh, can you please role play the phone call from the Broncos brass to Hilton tonight? Hashtag who dis <laughs> you missed that. That was me earlier. That's how I started the pod. I was like, Oh no, this is the wrong Kendall. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, no, it, it's, I, I don't know if he's excited or peeing down his leg right now. I, I'm not sure which, which direction he would be going. I mean, cause that saints defense is like you said, it's no laughing matter. Could be the best they, in the league. Right. Especially and against the run. Historically and and they've, they've, the run absolutely been the best defense in November. Yeah. And uh, so I don't know. Part of me would go just send them straight to voicemail 
if I'm Hilton and uh, <laughs> catch a flight to Timbuktu? I, I'm not sure. <laughs> oh man, you're looking at this all wrong. This is such an opportunity for him. If the Broncos get the game out of their butt, he's made. He's going to be on Good Morning he, America. It'll be at the late night talk shows. So he ESPN, would be a Scott legend Elfo, in Denver for the rest of his life. I mean, he, he'd be able to eat for free the rest of his life if he lived in Denver. So yeah, I, I mean, it, it's it's a no lose situation for him. If he goes out there and plays great, then like you said, he becomes a celebrity. If he plays a bad game, everybody's like, well, that was expected. So it's, Hinton. it's yeah, it's Hinton. Hinton. Okay. Well, yeah, they put Hilton here. Just making sure. But uh, we're still learning who this guy even is. <laughs> yeah. That's how, how unknown this whole situation is. And I, I don't even know if the Broncos know what plays they can run with him. Uh, there's going to be quarterback power. There's going to be a lot of run. And I know everybody's been saying, give the rock to Lindsay. They're st- shouting out all these stats about how good the Broncos are when they give the ball to Lindsay. Was it 15 times he rushes it? I'm thinking you'll probably have a tab in the loss column from this one, but who knows? It's going to take some creativity. I also think that maybe it'll create some, maybe this will be the galvanizing thing for the Broncos going forward. The NFL, yep. again, two middle fingers from the league. You know, this is, this is absolute BS. We're going to go out here. Nobody thinks we're going to win play loose. I know that there's been a little bit of back and forth between the offense and the defense again. Well, now you guys have a common enemy. It's the BS of the league coming right. down. And th- this might be something that you remember that game where nobody gave us a shot and we lost still, but you know, that really turned things around for us. And maybe that's the thing that gets them out of the world of suck. I, I need something, Carl. I need something to, be, yeah. <laughs> to pull out of here because <laughs> it's just, it's too much. It, where, where would this rank on Broncos victories in history? If they win this one, well, I mean, it's small potatoes because they're not probably going to the playoffs. But like, as far as the craziness, I mean, it would probably be up there with that. Almost a lot of those Tebow games. But I think I'm thinking about that playoff Tebow game. Yeah, yeah, I, I'd put it right behind that one okay. because I mean, that was a playoff victory. Yeah. So you, you got to give it to to the Broncos for that one. But yeah, I, I think if you win this one, it, it's got to be right there because it, it just is so unexpected. I mean, I, I would bet the Broncos are that big of an underdog like they were in that one. And uh, the Jedi's hut coming in. This is where the Broncos could just go all out on a team and have some fun and see if the Broncos can really turn loose. Yeah, it, really, it is a no lose situation for him. The Saints are the one that uh, have all the pressure. If they lose this one, it is going to be the talk of every NFL station out there, uh, even every sports station, really. The fact that yeah. they lose to a practice squad wide receiver. <laughs> they would never live that down. Ah, uh, man, it's uh 2020 can't just continues to go more off the rails, but I really like it. I think this is again nothing to lose for the the Broncos at all. They go out there, play loose, defense, the whole team should have something to be irritated about. Go out there and we'll see what happens. So and also I see a lot of people saying that uh people picked up Kendall Hinton on their fantasy squad to play him in flex <laughs> to get those excess points. So yeah, you guys playing some 3d chess out here. I, I see you that is, I mean, it might be a thing where he, you know, only rushes the ball and isn't great, but I think that's, that's thinking outside the box. I really do appreciate it. And God, I hope the Broncos can take some of that outside the box thinking this week. Yeah. Uh, Richie rich coming in here. Top 10 craziest. Yeah. It, it would be top 10 craziest, not only for the Broncos, but probably for NFL history for them to pull out a victory. I, uh, so it, it is, maybe they can just go play loose, have some fun. And, and the defense, maybe they are mad about how this is all kind of played out. Maybe the offense is mad too. That offensive line just gets out there and says, we're going to run over these people. I don't know. You, anything's possible. I, I'm not saying the Broncos are for sure going to lose this one, but this is one of those like one in a million. So you're saying there's a chance. And I've seen Ian ask this one a couple of times now. Uh, can Denver play this game under protest? Honest to God, I am not sure, uh, but I'm guessing that the players are going to be irritated and will they officially protest? I don't know. I just, I can't imagine them forfeiting, right? Like we would have probably heard that by now. Maybe they'll be pushed up into the moment, but uh, we'll see. I mean, this is really uncharted territory. I'm not sure yeah. what's going to happen. And again, this is a team without an owner right now. So they don't have that solidifying singular force to tell them this is what's happening to be that, that leader. So um, yeah, and poor Bulls talk about raining on his parade. I think uh, I think Bulls is going to be okay. I think he's like crying in the money kind of thing, you know. So, but yeah, that's kind of a bummer. It's today was going to be a big day for him. Hopefully, he goes out there and just plays great because what else can you do? Uh, we got 
DeHein coming in? Sure. We'll go with that. Uh, Detroit lost their head coach and GM odds on Stafford to Denver next year. I don't think it's not it's not impossible. The contract makes it a little bit unsure, and I think also if Locke really struggles down the stretch, assuming Locke plays now, because <laughs> who knows? But uh, I think that uh, Matt Stafford would be a guy that LA and Fangio might try to hitch their wagon onto just because he's a sure thing. You can get him in here. There's not the question mark of the quarterback. You can use an early pick to get a blue chipper that's probably more likely to make an impact to your one at a different position. And that gives those two a better chance in 2021, which is probably what it's all about. They're all those, both those guys are probably living year by year at this point for the Broncos. So that's where it is. Um, and I mean, Ravens been winning at with a running back at quarterback, LOL. Uh, Lamar Jackson would never play running back. He's too skinny. He, that's a wide receiver playing quarterback. Come on. Yeah, there you Come go. On now. There no. you go. <laughs> no, he's, no. I mean, he's struggled some this year. We don't have to go down the whole Lamar Jackson thing, but uh, it's crazy. I mean, this, you're right, Carl. It's, if they had, like, let's say this happened, we found this out Tuesday, and the Broncos had to play Kendall Hinton, or they probably would have signed something. Let's say they have to play Kendall Hinton. At least then you can kind of do some stuff with the game plan and get some reps out there. It's, <laughs> they don't have anything. Like, what are right. they doing right now? I, I really think this is one of those where they are putting, like, 10 to 15 plays together and giving it to everyone on the offense and saying, this is what we're going to have to do. Yeah. We're going to run these plays and we're just going to just memorize these plays. Keep it as simple as you possibly can. Uh, like I said, I mean, you can have some trick plays in there. That's not making it complicated. I'm just saying make it to where he has to memorize as little as possible. So he's doing as little thinking out there as possible. Uh, just so he can play fast. The offense can play fast. Rely on your running game. I mean, you're going to have to understand that you're going to probably have some three straight runs, punt, kind of plays uh, that, that's how it's going to go uh but i don't know it is i i like i said i am so excited to watch this just because i want to see the chaos that it brings yeah i'm with you too and we got kenneth coming in here do we get shelby back i think shelby's off protocol but i think he might be limited he might be on a pitch count because i think there's some yeah. questions about his conditioning for this game because apparently it hit him harder so, so we'll see what happens, but it, I think he'll be on a pitch count. And also, Carl, you're talking about that. You're talking about three runs and a punt. I early on, if this game is close and this with how little the Broncos have to lose, how at what down are you going for it? Like on every obviously every fourth and one. I'm just going to assume that you're you're going to do that, even if it's like in in your own twenty. But like yeah, fourth and two, fourth and three. Are you like at what point are you punting the ball? Because I'm going to be super aggressive. I'm going on yeah. going for it on fourth and three every time, and if right. they stop me, then we have to get those bounces to go our way to win this game. Right. You're right. You're going to have to take some risk. And, and there's, since there is no real risk in the sense that everybody's going to expect them to lose, go for it, go for a fourth and two run. Some of those trick play, uh, you know, where you have KJ Hamler coming across doing a, a jet sweep or something like that. Uh, that's not really a trick play, but you know, those kind of things to make the defense at least have to respect how you're trying to run the football. Yeah, that's the the main thing I would try to do. Since you're you're not going to have much of a pass game, make them have to keep track of at least four guys, and that four different guys could have the football at any on any given play. And I do really like that we're coming off a week where the Broncos showed some complexity and different schemes with the blocking for the run game with different pulls from Bulls who killed that defensive back. I think it was Xavier <laughs> Howard sent him into yeah. space, and Dalton Reiser and Lloyd Cushenberry. And this is a week where you're going to have to be really diverse with your run scheme now. And at least it's not going to be totally out of the blue because they showed a little bit last week on tape. Granted, it's a different element with the quarterback probably going to have to be more of a, a run option in that now as well. And that adds another body, which means just another ballerina out there in the complexity of the routine of getting all this working together. But man, it's uh it could be tough. And uh, we got jabber jaw gaming coming in. Do you see a lot of tight end screens to fan? I'm guessing there'll be a lot of short passes. If there are many passes at all, that being said, I would punt on starting any Broncos this week because, again, if this was a team where the Saints were a terrible defense, you might see some big gash run plays. But I think the Saints are going to be very disciplined and they're going to stop the run. Now, before we said Tuesday, Saints are going to sell out to stop the run and make Locke beat them. Now they're really going to stop the run. It might be playing that bare front, you know, the 46 that you kind of can play in playing Madden and yeah, it's goal <laughs> line, but I don't want to play goal line set. So, uh, that, I, I would not be playing any Broncos in fantasy besides maybe Hinton and flex. If you're desperate, just because 
ball, you know, <laughs> why not? Yeah, it, it's like I, said, <laughs> I don't know quite what plays they, they can run with him. I'm, I'm not sure. I need to watch a little bit more of, of Hinton and what they, they did with him in college. Uh, I saw somebody suggest RPOs where really most of his read is about two different players, yeah. the, the edge rusher and then the linebacker. If, if they come up, hit the, the slant pattern, if they stay back, hand it off. Yeah, that makes sense. Make his reads as simple as possible. I mean, he's still going to have to make some kind of read. but So I, I wouldn't mind that one bit. Yeah, and we also saw Pistol last week as well, which typically is a little bit better for an athlete quarterback. So uh, do you see the Broncos doing a Wildcat package? I'm guessing they're going to have to. I'm guessing you're going to see some trick plays with somebody random back there. I don't know if I would subject Judy to those type of hits, but a running back maybe, and also maybe a tight end as well, although with Noah Fant nursing a pretty severe ankle injury. I'm not sure how much I'm putting him in that situation as well. Right. Uh, but you got running backs. I mean, I, I could see it. Heck, I've Royce Freeman flanked by... Lindsay and Melvin Gordon. If we're going to do it, we just might as well do it. You know, yeah. like, <laughs> and I'm a running back. Don't matter guy, but this is, this is crazy. We just got to do something off the wall for the, uh, for the walls of anything else. Uh, will Sean Payton be fired with an L? Uh, <laughs> no, but uh, that would be funny. And if so, uh, Sean, you're, you're welcome in Denver. Yeah, <laughs> that would be, it would be funny to see him get fired for, for losing this one. Uh, but you're right. Their, their record right now, what they're eight and two. So, yeah. so one loss in a game that like is just going to be so chaotic. Anything can happen. <laughs> I'm with sure it. Be like, I'm... what happened? I mean, if you're an owner, you're going, dude. That was supposed to be a about the easiest teed up home run why, win ever, and you lost it. <laughs> yeah, we got Doctor Strange Love saying, "What do you think if we run the triple option like military academies?" That's such a coordinated song and dance that the Broncos. Oh getting this information the day before the game. I just, I don't know how they could do that Yeah, because they don't have the plays down. You know, right. you have to get the timing down and the looks right. And they have to be coordinated with guys pulling on the offensive line. And it's like, I understand that those teams do it to have a different type of offense because they don't have the athletes sometimes that some of those other programs do, but like, that's what they practice the entire off season to get, to be able to run that weird offense. I don't think you can change it up in one week and be able to do that. Right. For a guy who's I, I taking think, no reps. I think RPOs would be easier. Yes. You, you have a lot less options, a lot less guys coming with it. And it's a quicker decision on, on who ends up with the ball at the end. So I think if you see anything of, of a college offense, I think that's what you see rather than a triple option. I was kind of joking when I said that the Broncos would be running triple option this year. Uh, when I was talking to Chad earlier, but uh, honestly, this is something my cousin asked me years ago playing a turkey ball, but why don't teams just pitch the ball around after getting a little space? You know, I've seen, I think it was week one this year, the chiefs maybe did it where it was a slant or a curl to Travis Kelsey. And then he flipped the ball to me, call Hardman and Hardman ran for like 80 yards. This is the week to do that. If you yeah. think something is stupid, it's... but potentially innovative, I understand it's putting the ball at risk but you have to manufacture something this week and you have nothing to lose. Do something crazy. I mean, if that's maybe that's the new big thing, I know that you're pitching a live ball, but get some weird plays out there like that. You're going to have to do something crazy yeah. to win this game. I think called hook and ladder. Is that right? Yes. Yeah. And uh, I, I, <laughs> I still remember uh, in college, we had the local high school team. They were competing for the state championship and some of their players came to the field we were practicing or just playing at and uh, needed an extra practice. And so they challenged us to a game. It was just two hand touch. You know, we didn't want to injure anybody. But uh, at the end, that's what we ran was the hook and ladder. And we ended up whooping them. I, I think the final score is like 49 to 14. And they just walked off, wouldn't even shake our hands. And uh, but yeah, we, we wrote those plays up on our hand. Maybe you're going to see that in the huddle where they're sitting there just kind of drawing up plays on their hands and saying, hey, let's just try this, see what happens. You know, most of these guys ran some of these things in high school. So yeah. gotta be simple. It, it would be crazy, but eh, what, what's to lose? <laughs> All right. And we have Buana giving us one finger up here for something. Here we go. Now it's worse for Sean Payton losing to us tomorrow or the seven and nine Seahawks. We will run RPO and Wildcat and see some wide receiver throws down the field. God, this is a game where we could probably miss Cortland Sutton, right? He threw that dime yeah, last year. That was a great throw. Incredible. He probably, I mean, heck, he might have given some of those uh, Britt Rippon and Jeff Driscoll a run for their money this season. Yeah, um, he might have been the starter. 
Yeah, for sure. The, but what's worse for Sean Payton, it would be losing to the Broncos tomorrow. Although that being said, they're kind of competing with the Saints for a spot potentially given Tampa Bay is on their heels. But still, this this would be very sad for them. And we also got Madungus coming in here. I wanted to get to this one before we got on out of here. Uh, if we win, Hinton automatically goes to, into the ring of fame. I don't know about that, but Broncos country do me one thing. If Hinton and the Broncos win this game tomorrow and Hinton is some reason that they win, Hinton never buys a drink again in the city of Denver. Yes. Like, I think we can do that for him at least. <laughs> Ring of Fame, eh. getting him drunk, not on his dime, I'm in. Easy for me to say I'm not in Denver, but we appreciate yeah. you guys. We got to get out of here. It's getting long. I got to cook myself some dinner. A lot of news today. Uh, quarterback chaos, I guess is what we'll call it. Absolute chaos. And then Garrett Bulls getting a well-deserved contract, four years, $68 million. Uh, Didn't get a chance to talk any draft. Didn't get a chance to talk too much Saints even, uh, but – God, that's the world we're living in. Also nice to chat to drop by. Uh, you guys find Carl on Twitter at Carl Dumbler MHH. Also find myself at Nick Kendall MHH. Going over to milehighhuddle.com for all of our written content and also the community content for Mile High Huddle. Head on over to iTunes and leave us a five-star rating and a comment. Like, subscribe, and share. And if you are joining us on YouTube, also Facebook, click those little thumbs up. We like to say that. Uh, doing so is a huge way to support us and can help us continue to bring you these Denver Bronco deep dives. It's not just us. It's also the... Building the Broncos. I got my hat here, Carl, always. Um, and we also got the Huddle Up podcast and the Dove Valley Deep Divers. This is the Mile High Insiders today. Luke, normally with us, but Carl, very nice to join us today. Luke's probably sad he missed it. Man, we got to be eating worms. What a crazy day. Yep. Um, follow us on Twitter at Mile High Huddle and at BTB Football Pod. Uh, going over the, the chat again, we really appreciate all you guys. Sorry we could not be in as well. We got Naj coming in one more here. Um, from the Hinton Scouting Report, the last time the quarterback was an emergency start. 203 passing yards, two touchdowns, and 92 yards rushing. Oh, man, let it be. Let it be. Let it be. Uh, that would be incredible. But, guys, we really appreciate you. I uh, saw a lot of new names, a lot of old names in the chat today. Stay safe. Hope you all had a good Thanksgiving. Uh, and we'll see what happens tomorrow if there is a football game. 